the brain and causing them not to be able to see it. Incidentally, most people with depression realize they're getting depressed, or they feel that they, once they get there anyway, they know that they're depressed. They don't feel good and they know something's wrong. Um, the reason I bring that up is because when you get into mania and hypomania, people don't usually realize that they're getting these states. Okay, they feel pretty good, and to them, everything, everything's fine. It's everyone else that's got the problem, not me. You know, so that'll be important when we talk a little bit about treatment because it's difficult to keep somebody who wants to feel like this on medication to keep them from feeling like this. Okay? Um, okay, and let me just show you now real quick another picture. Uh, I don't know how well this will show on the camera, but for, for those of you, and I, you know what I could do is pass these around. This is called Starry Night Over the Rome. And I don't know if there's a glare or not, but you see the dark darkness of this picture? I mean, I just kind of wonder if, if Van Gogh didn't have some significant depression going on when he painted this picture. Uh, I don't know for sure, but uh, it's possible. It's a pretty dark picture. Um, so that's Starry Night Over the Rhone. Um, he did another one, and everybody's familiar with this one, and I apologize. This one got kind of cut off for some reason, I guess, printing it out on, a, on the computer. This is, this is The Starry Night, so this is his most famous painting. And, um, I wanted to read just sort of an excerpt about uh, somebody describing this picture and while I'm holding it here, if I can do all these things at the same time. Um, it says, The starry night was completed near the mental asylum of St. Remy, uh, 13 months before Van Gogh's death at the age of 37. Vincent's mental instability is legend. He attempted to take Paul Gauguin's life and later committed himself to several asylums in hopes of an unrealized cure. And here's where they describe the painting. Van Gogh painted furiously, and the starry night vibrates with rockets of burning yellow, while planets gyrate like cartwheels. The hills quake and heave, yet the cosmic gold fireworks that swirl against the blue sky are somehow restful. So, kind of interesting. I mean, when you think about it, I mean, how, what kind of a mood state would he might, may he have been in this, in this with, when he painted this? And I don't know. I mean, it could have been a mixed, almost a mixed state, because there's some bright colors, and the, but he also could have had some psychosis with the swirls and things. It's just difficult to tell, but, um, but kind of interesting to think about, you know. Uh, again, our moods control a lot, right? So it, it, one of the things we'll talk about is when you're manic or you're hypomanic, you could be extremely creative. Things come to you like they don't come to other people. Um, that's the blessing and the curse about this illness. The blessing is that when you're hypomanic, you can do things nobody else can do. You can think of things that nobody else can think of. You don't need as much sleep and things like that. Um, that contributes great, that you could, could, could potentially contribute great things to society when you're in a state like that. Um, the, I guess sort of the bad part is that then you have a risk of sinking down and becoming very depressed uh, or going fully manic. Um, so let's talk just for a second about mania. Okay, I have a little description here. Mania, and this really describes hypomania, I think, is what this is describing, but it can start with a pleasurable sense of increased energy, creativity, and social ease. Interesting, because a lot of folks become very, very at ease in social situations, whereas when they're just in their more no normal state or when they're depressed, they're very uncomfortable socially. But when they start to get hypomanic, they're the life of the party. They're the people that are fun to be around and have lots of energy and talk really quickly. Um, and again, like I said, they become very creative sometimes when they have these uh, hypomanic states or even manic states. Um, now, what is, what is mania? I mean, how do you define mania? We're going to talk about mania first, then we'll go back and talk about hypomania. Mania is at least a week, and they say that because there always has to be some time on it, but again, it's usually longer than a week. But... Uh, it's at least a week where um, your mood is extremely elated, euphoric. You feel on top of the world, you know. Um, the, other, other, the other possibility besides that euphoric type feeling is that you can be extremely irritable. Uh, remember, that was the same as depression, too. So, you know, that's an interesting thing. sometimes difficult to tell. But the difference from depression is that you don't need sleep. With depressed folks, when they're depressed, they don't get much sleep, maybe, but they feel it. They feel miserable all the time. Mania, you don't need the sleep. It's two hours, you're up, bouncing off the walls, tons of energy, got all these things you got to do, let's go, let's go, let's go. Other people in your family and friends are just saying, hey, I can't keep up, time out. 
can't keep up. Um, really, the person that is manic looks like they're on speed, but they don't necessarily, they're usually, you know, they don't have to be on speed. As a matter of fact, they're on speed, it may not be bipolar disorder, it may be related to the, to the, to the speed. So decrease the need for sleep, and that's key, but um, lot, need, and they have lots of energy when they're manic, talking very fast and changing topics so quickly that other people can't keep up. So that's difficult to describe, but have, has anybody ever seen Rob, uh, Robin Williams on, on a talk show? You ever seen how he, he just get, he gets going? I mean, he gets rolling, it just goes and goes, and, goes, and he, he changes topics kind of quickly. Now, usually we can keep up with him. We see where he's going, the connection between his thoughts. But somebody who's manic, imagine for a second, you can't, I mean, they're talking about, I'm talking about the brain right now, and then now all of a sudden I switch, and I'm talking about cars, and then I switch, and I'm talking about money, and I switch, and I'm talking about the weather. It's just quick like that, sudden. And uh, now, as you can imagine, these folks, their thoughts race, and that's kind of how come, that's why they have the, the changing, we call it flight of ideas, is what we call it, that's a fancy word for it. Basically meaning their ideas are all over the place, and then when they talk, that it, that it shows up that way. They're extremely uh, easily to, easy to be dis distracted. Um, I had one patient that I saw one time. He was in college, and he couldn't focus on any one subject for very long. So he'd take three textbooks from three of his classes. He'd read one page of one textbook. He'd read the, next, the, the one page of the next textbook, one page of the next textbook, flip all three pages, and start over, you know, start again. So um, very distracted. It's hard to focus, uh, stay on one task for very long. Um, and again, these things all have to occur and last for at least a week, okay, all these symptoms I'm talking about. Folks that get manic, they sometimes have a, a, an inflated feeling of power, greatness, or importance. Uh, feel like they, you know, have some special abilities. And, and sometimes when you're manic, you can do an awful lot of stuff that other people can't do. But sometimes it gets to the point where your thoughts kind of get the better of you and you start to, we call it psychosis, and we'll talk about that. The psychosis means you're not thinking in reality. Sometimes what happens is you might think you're, you know, you've got the power that, to change the world, or you've got the power to, or maybe you're, maybe even you're Jesus Christ, or you know, you're president of the United States, or something like that. Um, and and this does, this stuff does happen. Again, we'll get into it in a second, but it only happens with the full-blown mania uh, of type one bipolar disorder. It doesn't happen with bipolar type two disorder. Um, other things that happen when somebody's manic, and these are sort of the famous ones that people think about, but it's, it's doing reckless things without really thinking about what could happen. So it could be things like, um, you know, spending lots of money that you don't have. And I don't mean just, you know, racking your credit card debt up to $1,000. I, I, to give you an example, I had a gentleman who uh, was 60-some years old and, and was started on a, a high dose of steroids for cancer. Never had any mood disorder, according to his family, his whole life, no bipolar disorder or anything. And he got started on these high doses of steroids for this cancer, and within three days, he was manic. He went out and bought two trucks in one day. Now, that's the kind of spending I'm talking about. I mean, just, and as you can imagine, I mean, there, there wasn't a lot of forethought into that. There wasn't, there wasn't very good judgment. He, he didn't need two trucks. He just felt like he needed them. He felt great. He was on top of the world. Let's go, let's go, let's go. I'm going to go buy these trucks, and there we go. Um, I'll tell you more about him in a few minutes because it's an interesting, you know, you'd think it was just related to steroids. You stop the steroids and it gets better. Not so much. Uh, so I, it's an interesting case. I don't know what the what happens or what happens, you know, what happened to his brain, but it, it seemed like it permanently changed things. Um, another thing that happens is folks, libidos, remember we talked about depression, you lose interest, and you can lose interest in sex too, right? With mania, sometimes the, the, the libido or the sex drive goes way up. And if that happens, then you, and you combine that with not having very, you know, not thinking through things very well, and you might do some pretty risky things sexually. You might, you might take chances you wouldn't, wouldn't necessarily take otherwise. Um, and then finally, then things like even things like uh, making foolish business decisions. You know, you, you have all these great ideas. We'll talk about Van Gogh in a second. He had this great idea to make this this uh, uh, oh I forget what they called it, but a, a uh, thing. Uh, Thing for artists to come and learn, um, like a school, I suppose they called it something different. But he had this great idea to do it, and, and it sounds like it flopped. It didn't go very well, and that's probably because you know the idea is there, but being being able to push it through and continue and sort of stay with it—that's the hard part. Um, so, in severe cases in mania, and this differenti this differentiates mania from hypomania. So keep this in mind. But in severe cases of mania, people can lose touch with reality. 